Blessings, peace, prosperity. How's everybody doing today? My name is King Kevin Dorval. Today we're going to talk about the Black Cat Theory. And the Black Cat Theory is a bonus chapter um, in my book, Seven Types of Queens, King Desire. Um, this is the poster in the book here. As a matter of fact, a lot of people always ask me when I'm on the camera just to bring it up a little closer so people can see. Um, this book is actually a compare and contrast of ancient queens with women of today. And um, I know some of you already know that by watching several of my videos or my social media platforms. But the Black Cat Theory is something I really wanted to talk about since the inception of that thought, that idea. It's actually not a theory, it's a fact. Now, I'm going to cover a few things. One, where does the Black Cat Theory come from, which I just started. Two, uh, why is it that the Black Cat is viewed as bad luck? And I'm going to talk about that myth and also um, the history behind um, some of the queens of my book, um, particularly um, Nefertiti and also um, Queen Tai, who is the grandmother of King Tut. And how does that relate with what's going on today as far as um, knowing our history, knowing our culture and um, things of that nature. So this is going to be very interesting. So just stay with me. We're going somewhere with this. Okay. Now. The black cat theory. Now we all know the black cat is viewed as bad luck. You know, whenever there's a black cat, you know, some people get very frantic. You know, they run or they hide and they try to avoid um, black cats or even cats in general, but particularly the black cat. Now, once upon a time in, in Kemet, Kemet is the uh, land of the blacks um, or the burnt sand, uh, which is um, that's what Kemet means. That's ancient Egypt. Now, there's also Kush, which is, uh, you know, you have the Kushite queens, the Kandaki queens. One of the Kushite queens was uh, Queen Makeda, which we know as Queen of Sheba um, in the Bible. Um, she was the one that was dating King Solomon at the time and had a son. Um, and, yeah, very interesting story. We'll get to that just a little later. And also, um, I want to talk about why is it that the black cat became bad luck when it was actually good luck. You see, um, by set, which means um, she from the perfume jar, or she of the perfume jar, that's what the name means, uh, she was represented by, by set, um, African deity, African goddess, um, which means good luck, coincidentally, um, it's good luck. Also, it means um, fertility, uh, peace, and blessings. And so, how did it get from coincidentally become bad luck when it was always good luck? And I'm talking about they've been worshiping, not worshiping, but reverencing um, Baset, uh, which is spelled B A B A S E T. I've seen different ways to spell, but that's definitely one of the ways that I've seen it spelled. It's spelled in my book. Um, she was actually worshiped since 2890 BCE. Whenever you watch any history channels or any documentaries and you hear the phrase or see it, BCE, um, most people know it as uh, before Christ, especially in schools, um, in European schools throughout the states and you know different parts of the world. It's, you know, it means before Christ. Now, BCE means before the common era. People who don't believe in Christ uh, or who want to keep their, their work non-religious, they don't use BC. They use BCE, before the common era. Now, that's a very long time ago, 2890 BCE. Now, the Great Pyramids of Giza um, were said to have been built, I believe, around 2500 BCE. Um, so, her era is actually before that. Now, the pyramids, who knows how long the pyramids have been around, uh, really, some people estimate 100,000 years, some people say, you know, a couple million years. No one really knows. There's no scientific material to ever really date the time that the pyramids or the Sphinx and a lot of the great things that the African high culture civilizations were able to build and create. Now, where am I going with this? You know, back in those times, there was a trinity. You know, the original trinity is the mother, father, and child. That's what forms the perfect family, that, that trilogy, that triangular um, circle of energy, um, if that makes sense. Now, 
when we read the Bible, we know as the uh, Trinity, as the uh, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The female principle is completely taken out. Now, I, I mention that it's because, you know, a lot of people who um, were around when the Bible was written, King James time, they were, you know, they were misogynists. They were women haters. Um, they did not like the female principle. As a matter of fact, it's, it's quoted. There's a lot of evidence to back, uh, back it up that in Europe, uh, particularly in the Dark Ages, and we're going to get into that as well, because Europe had the Dark Ages, Africa had three Golden Ages, and even the Silver Age. I don't know how many Silver Ages there were, but definitely there were three Golden Ages. Now, you can tell a lot about a country and their progress and their um, advancement um, by the way the women are treated, girls, women. Um, by the way the females are, uh, what, what are their status? You know, are they oppressed? Are they um, degraded? That shows the level of intelligence of a country. Now, in Europe, they had uh, the, the witch trials, the witch hunts, uh, particularly King James of the Bible. He was a, 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 a woman-hating fanatic. And, and a lot of times when you meet people that hate women like that, they're usually gay or something wrong with them um, sexually. You know, they have some kind of sexual deviancy about them. They're backwards and uh, mixed feelings and emotions. Um, so if a woman knew more than a man, she was considered a witch or a cunning woman, especially if she was taught by African women how to deal with uh, natural herbs and spices and things of that nature. Now, the black cat... Um, being that it was part of the, you know, family system, you know, black cats were like rock and roll stars in Egypt, like they were um, highly revered, you know, if you look at a lot of these paintings or um, hieroglyphics, you would see cats, um, particularly the black cat. Um, the black cat was also represented by Sakmet. Well, Sakmet wasn't necessarily the black cat, that was definitely by Seth, but Sakmet was the um, female lioness goddess, the warrior goddess, you know, that's what she represented, war. And um, so they have a very close association. And I wrote the black cat theory in my book because I wanted to create the, um, show the correlation between the um, black cats and black women, black queens, black culture, black civilization, black high culture civilization that the um, archaeologists, Egyptologists, historians, and the, you know, that are sponsored and promoted through Discovery Channel, um, Nat Geo Wild, you know, they always exclude any black archaeologists, historians, um, Egyptologists, they never have them in their documentaries. If you ever noticed that, you know, growing up, I didn't realize, realize it myself growing up, I was just so fascinated, so, you know, so, um, you know, just so caught up, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the whole thought of there being, you know what I'm saying, a civilization that was African, building these great monuments and edifices, you know, around the world, obelisks, I mean, you know, it's just amazing, it's mind-blowing, you know, just that infatuation I completely ignored or could not even see, wasn't even conscious that there was a conspiracy to hide any type of African history any type of African contribution or success in the creation of civilization, anything of, of high culture civilization, anything of high science, um, was always, you know, European or A Arabian or, or Asian, never associated with Africans. They wanted to keep us out of that, even though Egypt is in <laughs> Africa. You follow what I'm saying? So that's the crazy part about it. We have to defend ourselves in order to keep our history. As a matter of fact, Egyptology was created to explain, um, really to oppress black intelligence. You know, they had to create these all these theories and, 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 and find out ways to um, block out or hide and omit any type of um, black involvement, African involvement in these... Uh, the science of building um, the pyramids, the science, uh, and literally the pyramids of Giza and, and many other pyramids. And by the way, there's more pyramids in, in Ethiopia, which is Kush, the land of Kush. There's way more, possibly hundreds of more pyramids um, on that part of the, the continent than in Egypt. But we we are caught up in Egypt 
for whatever reason. You know, maybe it's because they understand that um, if they continue to keep our focus just on Egypt, we would completely forget about the rest of the African con uh, countries that actually um, formulated Egypt. Egypt was the focal point where all the other countries came together and brought all their wisdom, their intelligence, their books, um, their rituals, you know, their uh, spiritual belief system. Egypt was the climax of all these countries coming together and, and creating one great uh, mega city, you know, one great mega country actually, because there was many different cities. And women, um, there were four, as far as I know, there were four women um, that were pharaohs. You know, Hatshepsut was one of them. And so these women had their own sovereignty. There was many other um, rulers that were female. As a matter of fact, the African, ancient African cultures, not just in Kemet, which is Egypt. Remember, I'm, I'm always say Kemet because I want you to wake up as well. You know what I'm saying? Awaken your consciousness and, and become aware of what's going on. Um, there were women that, that ruled and also, not that the men weren't in power, the men ruled from which the, the throne of the woman she said, the throne of a woman is her lap. That's the throne, the lap, the original lap. If you watch these statues, you'll see a statue of um, Asar. Right, yeah, Asar, I said, and Heru. Now, you have, not Asar, but I said, I said, and Heru. And, and Heru, which the word hero derives from, Heru is sitting on a lap of Aset. You follow what I'm saying? Even... Even though they like to omit black history and black contribution to um, Egypt because of just people, you know, saying aliens created this, people could not have that type of intelligence and science to be able to, to align the stars with the pyramids. And look, how, can you, how do you explain the, the people of Dogon? Dogon, who, you know, already had astrology on lock, you know, they already had the, the stars mapped out in caves. You know, and they're more in the western part of Africa. But think about that, though. You know what I'm saying? Egypt was not the only place where people were doing great things. They was all over the, the motherland. The motherland has an abundance. Well, you talk about way up north of the Egypt and Morocco or always south to um, South Africa. You know, the Congo, South Africa. You know, you have uh, an abundance an abundance of gold and diamonds and oil and rubies and emeralds, um, even cobalt, which is what all our phones and our, our, our computers and cameras, all of those things are made with, even a lot of spaceships and airplanes, you know, this um, black material is what these devices and, 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 you know, goods that we use all the time, that's where they derive from, that's where they come from, they need that. So the Africa really uh, purposely is viewed as the poorest continent in the world. Um, you always see poor images. And, and, and it's so crazy that it's actually the richest country in the world. It's actually where all, if not 90% of all the world's resources, natural resources come from. I mean, a very high percentage of the world's resources come from Africa. If Africa was to shut its doors right now, the whole world would collapse. You know, they wouldn't have access to the gold, the, the, the oil, um, you know, the, the rubber. You know, there's a story about how, and I don't want to you know, get too far away from the topic of, you know, this video. I have to make other videos. But let's just keep in mind, you know what I mean? There's, there's so much that the motherland offered, you know, and, and, and intelligence. The hieroglyphics, there's over 4,000 hieroglyphics. You know, explaining all types of different stories, and I, I believe they're formulas. You know, they also could be maps as well, so that when the future generation sees it, they understand where to go. But the Kemetans at the time of Basset, they were operating on a whole nother level of consciousness that we possibly would never ever understand again, unless you know some kind of revelation from God. It's the only way. You know, these people were so intelligent and so in tune with their mind, body, and spirit. You know, they were able to teleport. You know, I talk about it in my book, Seven Types of Queens, how when they were, you know, making love, when a woman and a man, a husband and wife were making love, before they made love, how they would pray. Um, you know, they practiced something called Mahatuma. You know, they light incense and candles and um, get the setting right, you know, get their spirit right, their mind right, you know, and they'll sit down and, and, and 
and kneel and pray together and, and pray to God to bless them and thank them for being with each other and then pray for their mates, dreams and goals and then they turn their focus on praying for the same goal and, and help them elevate in consciousness and, and reach just, you know, this, this ultimate ecstasy before they even made love or had intercourse. They were doing these things and they were able to teleport and, and, and you know, to different parts of the world, maybe even different planets. Who knows? They were just so in tune with the spiritual realm. And the same thing with Bisset, you know, Bisset and cats in general. You know, growing up, you know, I'm Haitian. Born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, I, I, I learned at a very young age that cats can see spirits. You know, um, cats can see, you know, what we can't see. You know, dogs as well. But the cat is, is especially in tune with the spiritual realm. And so that's why they are always portrayed in the castles and um, the pyramids and, you know, the houses of um, a lot of Africans. Uh, particularly in that Nubian region, that whole northeast region of Africa. Now, I will get up and grab this map, <laughs> but the whole northeast region of Africa um, is, is really uh, pretty much, uh, it was Nubia, you know, it was all one land together. And so all these people were working collectively to make things better. Now, how do we get out of this whole black cat being um, bad luck thing? Me personally, when I see a black cat, I smile. Um, as a matter of fact, I was at a cousin's house a couple of years ago down in Miami. And before I moved here to Atlanta, Georgia, they had a painting, which is in my hallway now. They had two paintings. And both these paintings were um, Kimmington uh, art. I don't know if they're original. I really doubt they're original because it just looks too new, too fresh. But it was imitating um, Kimmington art where a woman was crowning a man king. Now, the other painting had, the one I didn't get, had two women crowning one man king by putting it through the necklace, the collar. Around, around the neck. Matter of fact, this is a necklace of pyrite stone. Um, attracts positive energy, repels negative energy. But when I was pointing to my uncle, hey, you know, this, you know, this is what this means, and, you know, this is what the, the unk means, and this is why, you know, you have the symbol here, what type of crown it was. I remember they were, they had crowns of the north. And the crowns of the north has the snake symbol on it, and the crowns of the south has the bird on it. That's, you know, I do remember that. And so I, as I'm telling him that, a black cat walked by my leg. And I said, Bisset. And they was like, Bisset? What's Bisset? You know, <laughs> the cat name is Midnight, not Bisset. And I was like, no, that's an African goddess, you know. And, and just that moment, you know, was so surreal to me because I never in a million years, you know, would think that I, I, you know, I, that I would literally experience something like that. That as I'm speaking of that time, you know, something representing that time, the black cat, you know, <laughs> literally walked by my leg. And so people like, um, you know, how, uh, how do you say his name? Hawa Hasa. He was Egyptian, um, Egyptologist, in charge of the, uh, what is it called, Supremacy, uh, Supremacy Council of Antiquity or something like that in Egypt. You know, today's Egypt's called United Arabia or something. They even changed the name completely. But he's in charge of and the antiquity. You never see any black people in these documentaries. You really think about it. You never, never see any black folks in documentaries. As a matter of fact, when a woman, uh, Dr. Joanne Fletcher, um, a British psychologist was in Egypt and she, you know, said that she found the mummy of, of Nefertiti, you know, who I said, and she said this on Discovery Channel on, on a special that they had back in 2003. And I think, they, you know, she said 2003, they had a ban on her for five years. And then Hawassi, you know, uplifted the ban and allowed her to come back, you know, to, to do the special. Because there was so much pressure against this man to get up out of there because he's in charge of any, any archaeological digging, any type of... Um, uh, excavation of, of, of any sites in, in Egypt, it goes through him in that council, SCA, you know, um, uh, Supremacy, Supremacy Council, uh, something like that, you know, you'll see it, uh, of antiquities. And so um, even he's part of conspiracy. They know they cannot give black people any type of credit because it would debunk all those myths that came up came up with with us being inferior, 
us being less intelligent and, and, and less athletically inclined, inclined. I mean, that's it's bogus now we know that. Thanks to people like Dr. Diop, you know. Um, I want to bring attention to some of these books. Dr. Diop um, wrote this book, African Origin, Civilization, Myth and Reality. He wrote this book here. And um, a couple other books. I have two of his books. I think he wrote about, I, I want to say five, six books. He's from Senegal. What's so cool about this guy and why I give him kudos and props in, in many of my videos is the fact that he went in, he was in Egypt, allowed in, in Egypt to, um, you know, witness some kind of mummy or something like that. And so what he did was he snuck with a test tube a piece of the bone. And you can catch this on YouTube. He talks about it. You know, he speaks French and many other languages. He, he's a uh, ecologist, scientist, uh, physicist, and, and a politician from Senegal. And he, he snuck a piece of the bone, took it to a lab in France, invited several key um, scientists and um, archaeologists to witness you know what he was doing and to make sure he was doing it not that he needed them to witness that if he was doing it right he wanted to make sure they was watching him see it see him do what he was getting ready to do which was to test the melanin in the, in the bones now for a very long time scientists were saying that you know, there's no melanin there's, there's, there's no um, DNA in the bones that you can test for DNA and he proved that wrong and so when he did that, he f they found that there was a very high content of melanin in the in the bone, you know, very high content. Where this pharaoh had to have been black, you know what I'm saying? And they couldn't ignore it. When he did that, you know, sacrifice his brother did, which, which I give him mad kudos for. You know, Dr. Diop. Once he revealed the information, all these scientists seen it. They all wrote about it, wrote the articles, and how shocked they were. You know, um, his laboratory was actually set on fire, you know what I mean? Under, you know, suspicious uh, conditions. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's how much, you know, um, we owe people like Dr. D for what he did, you know what I mean? Because that was a very big contribution to um, our confidence and as proof that the pharaohs were black. Not that all the pharaohs were black, you know, you had pharaohs, there was a lot of invasions that took place in Kemet, you know, but the whole black cat thing, um, you know, they wanted to, 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 to keep us away from the black cat, so we will never tap into that DNA, you see. Whether or not we, we acknowledge it or not, we have our ancestors' DNA. Same thing with the cats, you know, same thing with dogs. They have their ancestors' DNA within them. It's a matter of them tapping in some parts of the spirits and brain and heart in order to acknowledge and to use those same gifts and talents that their ancestors had, or my ancestors had, your ancestors had. You know what I'm saying? And um, so by them creating this bad luck thing, it kept us for a very long time away from cats, um, from black cats. I mean, you think about it, you look at, you know, people in plantations, there's a lot of foods we still eat. We still eat plantation food, them collard greens, them chitlins, you know. Um, those things took place in, on a plantation, and four, five hundred years later, we're still eating those same foods because our ancestors liked them, we like them as well. You know, a lot of us don't read because, you know, our ancestors couldn't read and they were forced not to read. You know, they had to sneak, a lot of us had to sneak to read. You feel what I'm saying? Or, or if you get caught reading, you'll be killed. So, a lot of black folks still don't read. Generally speaking, we still don't read. We still have that, that fear that reading, we can't read, we shouldn't be reading so, uh, subconsciously. You feel what I'm saying? So, it's like, but if you understand that you come from greatness, you know, that you are a goddess, you are a god, a little god, of course, a little goddess. Um, you know, if you understood that you were, especially our, our women, you understood that you were worshipped as goddesses, queens of the universe, um, great mother, uh, mother, uh, mother god, uh, queen mother, I said that already, um, star of the sea, you know, that's another one, you know, um, lady. You know what I mean? There's so many great titles these women had, especially um, our set, which is Isis. We you know um, the Greeks call it Isis, and that's the most popular name. They don't say our set because it takes you back to Kemet. These documentaries that we watch, you never see two things. One, they use the word Kemet, and you would never, ever, 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 ever hear them say the word our set. They always say Isis or, or um, 
Asar, not Asar, but Osiris. You know, they never say Asar, not Set, because they are, if they say that, they are acknowledging that these people were deities from Kemet, the land of the blacks. So, I mean, it doesn't, I just watched some on Netflix called the um, uh, Pyramid, uh, Pyramid Decoded, or the Code of the Pyramids, the Code of the Pyramids. All these archaeologists, you're talking about at least 20 of them, you know, in a five-part series, maybe 20, 25, none of them were black. All of them were either Arab or white only, you know what I'm saying? So you don't even see black people in the background. So we have to fight for our history and understand that. And so hopefully the Black Cat Theory, you know, goes viral. I'm going to do another video about it. As a matter of fact, go to my blog at kevindorver.com and see the actual video that I made regarding the, um, not video, but the blog I made is the Black Woman God. That's where the whole title and concept of Black Woman being God come from. You know, the Black Madonna, the story of, of Mary and, and, and Joseph and Jesus. The Black Madonna, that's, you know, Mary holding Jesus. You know what I mean? That's the popes have these statues in their secret chambers, praising possibly every night, you know, to the Black Madonna. So if they understand the power of the, 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 the idol of a Black Madonna, a statue, what do you think the real Black Madonnas can do in real life? What do you think a real woman can do, real Black Queen, understand her power, understand her, her grace and uh, divine, sacred, feminine energy? What do you think that the real one can do, a real life Black woman can do? You follow what I'm saying? So, as long as they keep us away from that, from that, you know, black cat time, then they, in, in essence, they're taking away from that history as well. History is powerful because history contains the consciousness of a people in a given, in a given space and time. So, we have to do our best to read and understand the greatness of from which we come from. You follow what I'm saying? Because it helps with confidence. Confidence helps you as well increasing your faith. And, and knowing and having faith in your God and giving capabilities and talents is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And also, um, this book here that I read, um, Superwoman and the Goddesses. This is a book, um, book one. I wonder if she has any more by um, Akua Aset, a young lady. I got this book in Fort Lauderdale some years ago, and I really want to get in contact with her because I felt as if this book was very powerful and profound. And so if anybody know who this woman is, you know, tell her I'm looking for her, you know, and also get me on Steve Harvey or The View or any of those other, t The Real. Um, I want to get on any of the TV shows, you know. And last but not least, I want to make sure I mention um, Black Woman in Integrity. This was a book I wanted for a very, very, very long time. This is Queen Tai, the grandmother of King Tut. And, um, you know, she and, and, and Akhenaten, Akhenaten, obviously, well, not obviously, you guys probably don't know it, but... That's a um, cousin, I believe it's a cousin or uncle of King Tut Akhenaten, who's the, also the um, husband of um, Nefertiti. I'm sorry, yeah, Nefertiti. Nefertiti. So when Joanne, when Joanne Fletcher mentioned that she saw the, 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 the mummy of Nefertiti, you know, he knew that uh, Hawasi. You know, if you watch the documentaries, or, or you won't see him anymore in new documentaries because he's no, no longer in that, that seat of power. He has so many complaints. I, I think uh, a list of 20,000 people who signed a list to get him uh, out of Egypt or over the whole archaeology department. They just got fed up, uh, fed up with him. But, um, yeah, that's what's going on. You know what I'm saying? The Fatidi, Queen Tai. This book here has like so much um, Hathar, which is the golden calf that the Moses or Moses part of the Red Sea and people walk through. And um, once they walk through the Red Sea, they went to this, this place and they were still worshiping the golden calf, which is the, 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 the gods, the god, the goddess of Egypt. So they were pissed off. Why are you still worshiping? those guys and we just got your freedom. So these things, you know, it, it's quite interesting, you know, um, if you just know what you're looking for. You know, it, like Dr. Boris Shango always says, you got the keys and you know how to lock it. And so I hope you guys enjoy the Black Cat Theory, and uh, which is actually a fact. And, um, you know, be on the lookout. Go to my blog, it's a black woman God. Of course, black woman is God. Um, you will see that article. Um, it's actually the, the, the most popular blog I have. I mean, I've gotten so many comments. I had to block the comments, actually, on all my blogs because too much spam coming in. And I'm um, doing great things. So check out my book. 
And um, you know, either get this book or this one, uh, Seven Tides of Queen King Desire, or The Courage to Believe. I'm on the grind all the time, and you know, I speak at conferences, workshops. I also have um, Mashing Your Life workshop. Actually, I may change the night the name to Cage Eagles Can't Fly, just to you know, what I'm saying, give people that that feeling of flying, you know, uh, flying towards the goals and dreams and away from the drama and pressure. So definitely flap your wings, fly, be great, be confident. Peace, blessing, prosperity. Peace. King Kevin.